Hi guys, welcome to the last video of this tutorial series. I'm going to be teaching about extensions. Create a new project and let's jump right in. Extensions make it super easy for us to add functionalities to existing classes, structs, enums, and even protocols. Now imagine a scenario where we have a class called user, okay? And this user has a an attribute called name. Okay, so we just say var name, and this is a type string. Okay, now let's also say that this class user also has a gender. This is of type string as well. Now we're going to create our init. So this is name string and gender string. Then we're going to say self dot name is going to be equal to name. Self dot gender is going to be equal to gender as well. Okay, now that I actually have this class created, imagine that I want to add probably a, a new function, a new method, or a new attribute to this class. Okay, so what I'll do is create an extension. And to do that, we just use the keyword extension. Extension, what am I spelling? So I'm going to use extension, followed by the name of the class struct or enum or even protocol that you want to extend okay so extension and then user now in between this curly braces I can actually create methods or additional methods or computed properties so we can't actually create a, a variable like this and say probably uh, age of type int so it's not going to allow this happen because you cannot so see extensions must not contain stored properties so that's something you have to keep in mind. Great. Now, what we could do is to create a computer property. So let's say for one odd reason or the other, I want to get the name in reversed format. So I'm just going to say var reversed name. And this is going to be of type string. And all I need to do is say return return name dot reversed okay now notice something because we created an extension we actually have um, access to properties or methods that are within the original class okay so if I actually had a method here it's going to be available within this scope now um, this is actually returning a reversed collection so I'm just going to typecast this to a string. And this is going to be fine. Now, we could actually do something like create a, let's create an instance of the class user. I'm just going to say let, let uh, Emma equals user. I'm going to pass in name as Emmanuel and the gender as male. Okay. Now I'm going to print the reversed name. The reversed name is, and I'm going to pass in Emma dot, and you're going to see that we have actually have access to reverse name, reverse name, and when we run this code, we will get the name reversed. Does that make sense? So yeah, that's one thing about extensions. It actually allows you to keep things clean and organized. So I can actually do a lot more functionalities within the extension so I can create more methods uh, yeah so and this original class implementation is gonna be as it is so one thing you could actually do is have this in a file and create extensions in a different file so you know it's just gonna keep things cleaner and easier to extend now let me tell you something that's actually gonna blow your mind you know how I was the one that created this class user what if I want to add functionalities to an existing class? So one that I didn't create myself. So we could use date as an example. Okay, let's get rid of all of this. We're going to create a, a variable, or constant rather, called current date. Now this is going to be of type date. So we're just going to say date like this. Now let's print the current date. Now you're gonna see what we're gonna have. Good. So this is the default um, format for date. Now imagine that 
I want my date to be uh, displayed in a particular or custom format. Now, how do I do that? One way to do it is to actually create a function. To create a function here, and probably say custom date or something, and then I'm going to return a string, and this is going to take the date as date. Okay. Now, whenever I want to get my custom date, I'll just return. Let's silence this error. I'll just I'll just call custom date and pass in my date here. Right. This would be the expected behavior, but in other files, I'd have to implement the same function. So, one way to fix this is to actually implement this function as an extension of the date class because that's the only place or the only the only data type rather that I need to call this this um, function okay now what we could do is create an extension like this so I'm gonna say extension and I'm creating an extension of the date class like that it's as simple as this now by doing this we automatically have access to whatever function we create. So I'm just going to say uh, func current date like this and this is going to return a string sorry custom date custom date now this is going to return a string and note I can actually make this a computer property since I'm not actually passing any any um, uh, arguments so now by doing this I can actually do current date and whenever I use my dots, notice that custom date is going to be available to me. So you can see custom date. And if I run this, let's say I return Emmanuel. This is going to return Emmanuel instead of the date that we had. Now I know this doesn't make sense, so I'm just going to use this time to uh, just give you like uh, what word am I going to use? A bonus. So with dates, we could actually specify the exact format that we want um, data or the date to be returned. So to do that, I'm just going to create an object of the date formatter class. So date formatter is going to be equal to date formatter like this. Okay. Now the next thing we need to do is specify the format. So I'm going to say date format date formatter dot format date format rather it's gonna be equal to a string right now this string is going to be our format and there's actually a pretty interesting website that uh, gives us details of what each um, character sequence or whatever represents so why is for year no padding and yeah you can go through all of this and pretty much uh, design your date in whatever format you want so I'm just going to use, um, first of all, let's take month. So, abbreviated month. So, MMM. And we're going to take the day as well. So, I just need 14. So, D. Then, let's also include our time in a 12 hour format. So, we're going to have hour. So, H. And uh, we're going to have minute as well. M and finally we're gonna have the I want it as I want it as a 12 hour clock so I'm gonna add a here so I expect something like um, April abbreviated uh, what's today's date uh, I think fourth so fourth and then the time a.m. now after specifying the format the next thing you need to do is actually apply the format to do that all we need to say is the date format date formatter dot string from a date so what we're saying essentially is we want to use this format to get a string sorry we want to use this format to get a string from the date now this date is simply our self so you know this is our self is of type date so we're just gonna say self here and as you've guessed we just have to return the result of this formatting and uh, 
hopefully we should see a date in this format. So we're going to run this. And voila. So we have April, abbreviated, 4th, and the time is 4.34 a.m. One last thing I'd like to mention before we actually call it a wrap is that you can actually create an extension of the class to conform to a particular protocol. And guys, I have to apologize. It just started raining, so I hope it's not too noisy. Now let's let's quickly create a protocol called um, uh, execute me. Just running out of names. So here we're gonna have a print statement. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna have a function or method called say hello. Okay. Now we're gonna create a struct. Now this struct does not have anything. Oh, see me, I forgot to put the name. So we're gonna call this um, hala hala or haha, whatever. Now I want this struct to extend the protocol as an extension. Okay. Now to do that, I'm just gonna say extension, which we already know, and we're extending haha. Now, in order for us to extend this to conform to a protocol, I just need to like use the colon and the name of the protocol, just the same way we do it normally. So what this is going to do is it's going to force the extension to implement or to conform to the protocol. So I have to implement the say hello function. So I'm going to say func say hello. And here I'm going to print hi hi just like that and we're good to go now let's create uh, an object or an instance of this struct let ha equals ha ha <laughs> I don't even know why I chose this anyways now I can say ha dot say hello okay which is just what we learned in the protocols tutorial and hi hi I hope that makes sense so what we did was we created a protocol we have a struct and for some reason we didn't we didn't want to um, modify our struct implementation but we wanted to create an extension so we created an extension of the haha -ha struct and we made this to conform to our protocol and by doing this we have to implement our say hello so we did and yeah that's basically it so don't get me wrong you can actually do a whole lot more with extensions you can extend protocols itself and uh, enums as well so feel free to play around if you have any questions or confusions please reach out to me and I will definitely respond and if you enjoyed the video please like and don't forget to subscribe this is the end of this tutorial series, so I'm going to be starting a new one where we actually build iOS applications, so I'm pretty excited. So anyways, just don't forget to like, subscribe, and uh, see you guys in the next series.